So you might have heard about the dead internet theory. This is a conspiracy theory suggesting that the internet, particularly after 2016 or 2017, is no longer predominantly powered by human activity, but rather by bots and algorithms designed to manipulate online discourse and minimize authentic human interaction. Now, whether this is a conspiracy theory or not, this idea is becoming more and more real every month. And it's powered by advancements in how well we're able to create these neural nets, aka AI. The robot revolution is here, and apparently it's coming for YouTubers. Why YouTubers? I just got this gig. Please don't replace me. It's been like two years. Come on. But the point is that AI-created videos are quietly taking over YouTube. And this is the statistic that really got to me. Four of the top 10 YouTube channels by subscribers in May featured AI-generated materials in every video. Here's one example. This is uh, Masters of Prophecy. This channel has been growing like gangbusters. So here it is, 31 million subscribers. So if you take a look here, this is May 2025. It has over 100 million views. And Social Blade projects its growth to be kind of high, like based on the current estimates, how fast it was growing. So we're expecting to see it almost doubling its total views by the end of the year. I mean, that's massive, massive growth if it continues. And here's one of the videos, 85 million views from five months ago. It's just AI music. AI visuals, it's kind of this 80s punk synth type of thing. I don't even know what to describe it, kind of 80s vibes a little bit. And this is, I mean, getting tens of millions of views. And there's a number of other channels that they present here as mostly AI generated. But the question is, why are we seeing this? Is YouTube doing anything about this? So YouTube interestingly evolved in the past to pursue various trends. For example, it incentivized people to do longer videos, more professional looking videos so that it can compete with Netflix, for example. More recently, there's been a huge push towards the short form content to compete with TikTok. And now it's more thing yet again to kind of enter the age of AI and AI generated video. This is another channel, a chick of honor with 10 million subscribers showing various cutesy animals in various situations. This is having a lot of success as well. There are even whispers that big names like Mr. Beast are getting into some AI generated content to maybe launch an offshoot to try to kind of capitalize a new AI wave to create videos that are AI generated. Now, Mr. Beast did recently get into some trouble for posting a thumbnail generator tool that uses AI saying, if creators don't want the tools, no worries. The tool, while it received positive reactions, it also generated a lot of really negative backlash from people that viewed the generative AI as wasteful, tacky, and unethical. Now, how they promoted the tool probably had some role to play in it. They did say this using this tool literally feels like cheating and that the users can type in any channel on YouTube and it will use it as an inspiration for the thumbnail it's generating. As you can see here, some people even refer to it as a plagiarism tool as opposed to an AI thumbnail tool. A few months ago on X, I posted this actual photo of an actual print book, like a hardcover copy of a book that someone was reading when they realized that it contained a portion of a chat GPT response in it. So this is an actual physical book that somebody's reading and, you know, the story goes on and then there's a character in the story that's talking and they're having certain emotions or whatever. And then kind of like in between there, something along the lines of like, okay, now take this section and make it even more punchy with an even more emotion. And then at the beginning of the chat GPT response, like, okay, here it is. Here's the section with a little bit more emotional oomph. Here it goes. And it's, it's the next section of the book. So somebody was using chat GPT to basically write a book or at the very least, maybe edit some portions of it to maybe rewrite certain paragraphs to make them more interesting, but forgot to take out kind of the chat GPT response. So, you know, that portion of it kind of left that in there and the editor didn't catch it for some reason. And that book went to print and was sold with that little artifact buried in there. OnlyFans was also recently sued. OnlyFans, of course, allows you to chat with female models, have one-on-one -on -one conversations with them. And this is a paid service. And now they're being sued by two dudes who suddenly realize they may not be chatting with real models. 
and instead chatting to chatbots like ChatGPT or some other neural networks that are operating these chatbots. I don't really see the problem. They are chatting with the models, AI models. But I guess those are not the models that they've had in mind. So I guess that makes sense. Now, I think the big thing to understand here is that we're still missing a pretty big piece of the puzzle that's going to make this thing work a lot better. Put it on steroids, so to speak. And that is the computer use. So OpenAI has their operator. Anthropic has computer use. They're, they're all calling it different things. But it's the idea that you can have these AI agents navigate the web for you. Now, currently, we do have bots that are able to navigate the web, but they do it like a computer. They do it like a crawl bot from Google, for example. They don't interact with the website in the same way that you and I do. They don't use the keyboard and mouse, etc. And this allows these companies to filter that traffic out to kind of realize when it's maybe fraudulent if it's interacting with your ads or automated. But it's very possible that very, very soon we're going to get to the point where these things can operate computers just like you and I would, at which point they'll be indistinguishable from actual human users going about their business, clicking on ads, watching YouTube videos, etc. So, for example, here is ChatGPT. It's operated. This is by OpenAI. And we're going to say, go to Reddit, find the most popular recent post about AI and find one comment that is the most negative against AI. And we'll click go. And so what we're going to see here is it's going to open up a sort of a virtual desktop with a virtual browser and go to hopefully reddit.com. There it is. Go for it, little robot. You're doing great. Now, I've seen these work very well. I've seen these work not as well. Again, when it hooks into the website directly, when it navigates it like a computer would, these tend to be really, really good. But very often you'll get certain messages saying, oh, automated traffic detected, et cetera. So again, it can navigate the web extremely well, but it's obvious to those websites that it's potentially probably automated traffic. On the other hand, this is operating it like a human being would. It's using the mouse and the keyboard. Now, since this is kind of a virtual machine, there's still a little telltale signs that the company could use to understand that it's not real traffic, that it's not a real human user. But that line is getting blurrier, like it's going to get harder and harder to filter out automated traffic. So as you can see here, it's been blocked by network security. So again, Reddit was able to understand that this is automated traffic. Let's try this. Search on x.com for negative posts about AI. The short form content is especially susceptible to AI video. Since AI video can be anything, it can create a lot of novel, weird, extreme videos that really tap into that dopamine center in your brain and force you to watch all the way through. Here's Angry Penguin PNG posting his kind of a split test of normal videos that he posts that have a 3.6% completion across the video versus his VO3 AI generated videos at almost 25%, 25% of the people watching the video all the way through to the very, very end. That's a big, big number. And as he puts it here, the age of generative media is here. There are some big channels here on YouTube, even in the AI space, that are using AI to generate their videos. The voices, a lot of the images. There's a few AI editing tools. They're still not great, but they're getting better. But this might be kind of the next big wave. You know, before AI, we had the dead internet theory, right? But we don't know how true that was. Certainly a lot of it was algorithmic, but algorithms are driven by people. We tend to click on outrage content and the things that kind of make us mad. We tend to sometimes watch silly stuff that we're embarrassed to admit to later. I can't have TikTok open because it will suck me in for whatever reason. I'm very susceptible to it, especially if it's like late at night. If I'm tired, it's very easy to kind of zone off. So I, I don't even touch it. And of course, with AI generated content, video, voices, it just opens the door for so much more. More attractive avatars. Everything is voiced over with pleasant, perfectly sounding voices. Suno AI, which is that music platform, I think produces great AI music. It's very catchy. A lot of this can be automated, right? You can have AI be the script writer. You can have it be the music producer, the image generator, the video generator. It can do everything on autopilot and post it. So I don't quite know where this is going, but 
I think the idea of the dead internet theory is becoming a lot more likely. The next kind of big piece is these AI agents being able to navigate the web, like I showed you in that operator, which failed, by the way. So a lot of them failed to complete the task. I think mostly OpenAI is trying to push us to use it for purchasing stuff, open tables, StubHub, et cetera, let's say shopping, Target. Here, for example, it's suggesting, let's see if I can buy some skincare cream at my local store or find a refurbished KitchenAid stand mixer. Let's see how well it does at that. But the point is we're entering an era where these AI agents and various AI generative tools will take over more and more of our social media, more and more of the web. And with the introduction of things like Operator, not exactly OpenAI's technology, but some open source version of it, which we're already seeing coming out. For example, out of China, they have a lot of open source versions that are able to do this. We have on, on GitHub open source of things that can navigate your computer. At that point, also the user side will be automated. Those bots will be able to watch videos and read content and click the thumbs up button. By the way, prove to me you're not a bot Go ahead and click that thumbs up button really fast. That, that, that lets me know that you're a real, unique, and wonderful human being. Go ahead and click that button. Also click the subscribe button if, if you haven't already. YouTube and Google are, of course, seemingly leaning into it. So they own VO3. So if they can somehow have VO3 generate content for YouTube, kind of monetize both sides of that, of course, that's going to be great for them. As this article points out here, Masters of Prophecy, that uh, YouTube 80s channel that plays kind of like that music in the purple and blue schemes. I mean, it's, it's, it's okay. It's pretty good. I've seen better, but they're getting a lot of views. And as this article puts it, that growth looks suspicious, right? Because they went from a few hundred subscribers in February to over 30 million in June. That's a fast growing channel. Holy moly. By the way, in June, based on their views, they're probably getting paid something like 100,000 a month, depending on how much they're getting paid for the for the CPMs, maybe as high as 400,000. It's kind of hard to tell without knowing what their audience is, whether it's younger, older, US versus outside of US, which, you know, where primarily that audience is based. But for 100 million views, you're gonna get paid quite a bit. But the big question is here, you know, if this is driven by AI, not just on the creator side, but also maybe on the user side, right? Maybe there's a little bit of a shenanigans going on there. The question is, how does that affect the people that are paying for ads? They are the people that are supporting YouTube by purchasing advertising on that platform. And these AI bots might not buy a product from an advertiser, most likely won't. So let me know what you think about this. Are you okay with AI generated content? Are you worried that the internet basically kind of dies if it hasn't already? Or if not dies, then at least become kind of artificially populated by bots where humans kind of get served whatever the AI algorithm decides that the human being should see. And it's largely curated by AI as well as sort of upvoted and pushed out by AI. Let me know what you think. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. My name is Wes Roth, and I'll see you in the next one.